Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. This is going to be a quick tutorial on setting up the Cindy Studios characters with the, the modern stuff with Unreal Engine 4 version 4.25.3. So, what I've done is created a blank project, third person template, and I've added in the Polygon Military Pack, which is pretty new. If we hit play, we got a mouse cursor. Let's see, we got the UE4 mannequin, run around, do our thing, but we want to do our thing with Cinti Studios assets. No secret that I like using them. For giggles, I'm going to remove those too. And we don't need you. Go away. Alright, so when setting this up, if we leave it as nothing, we're still going to get a character and it's going to use the default. So what I'm going to do is, to get started in my root content folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called Character. And that's something that I usually do. And then another new folder here called Animations. And for this quick tutorial, I'm just going to use the standard animations that we see here. But you can use this with any of the uh, UE4 mannequin skeleton um, animations. So also we've got inside animations, create a new folder called mesh. Now, the reason why I've got a mesh folder is whenever I'm working with Cindy Studios assets, and I do quite a bit, um, what I like to do is unify my mesh. And what I mean by that is if I'm using this and say the Battle Royale pack combined together, I'm gonna make one mesh and I'm gonna make sure that everything is targeted to that mesh. So to get started, I'm going to go in here to the Mesh folder and Characters. Now they've already got all these blueprints here, and I don't really need them. It's nice to see them, but I'm just going to clean up my own stuff here, and I'm going to get rid of those. So, once they're gone, we'll move right along. Now, other people have mentioned that they were having some issues with um, 4.25, and I really haven't encountered any problems when doing any retargeting, but I'll show you one little thing that I've added extra into the steps that I do. So, now we've got our mesh folder. I'm going to take our SK underscore CHR underscore soldier male skeleton. I'm going to left click, drag it over here to my new mesh folder, and I'm going to copy here. And then I'm going to hit F2 and rename it. I'm just going to call this the SK underscore polygon. Now, any other Cinti assets that I bring in here, the majority of them will work this way. There are a few minor exceptions, but the majority of them will work this way by having a common skeleton. So when I go back into my character folder, I'm going to select all of these characters. Just want the skeletal mesh folder uh, files. So I'm going to left click on this one, shift left click here, and then control left click here. That way I've got all of these selected, and then I'm going to right click on it, and it's going to give me an option to come up here to skeleton, and I'm going to assign skeleton. And then I'm going to select the SK polygon that I created. Now you're going to have to do this over and over and over every time that window pops up, and that's going to be reassigning the skeleton to use this other skeleton that we want. Easy enough, just takes a couple seconds. And then we're going to make some changes. Little minor stuff. Yes, it's like watching grass grow, or paint dry, but easy enough. And yes, you'll do this with all the characters you want to use that one skeleton. If you're only going to use one or two, then you only have to do one or two, but I go ahead and just do all of them. It takes about a minute to do it. There we go, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit Save All, Save Selected. Now. We've got all that done. Let's go back to our mesh, open that mesh up, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit Apply to Asset. That's going to lock the uh, this skeleton right here 
into that. Now, as you notice, our character here is in a T pose. So we hit save, and then we look at the UE4 mannequin that we're going to be using for our retargeting. He's not in a T pose. So I'm going to go to the retargeting manager. If you don't have this, all you have to do is just click right there and it'll add the tab. We're going to change this to select humanoid rig. Make a couple changes here. We're going to click on the upper arm, rotate it up by 50. Lower arm, down by 10, back by 30. The hand, we're going to bring it up by 20. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Bring it up by 50. Lower arm down by 10. Back by 30. And the hand up by 20. Now I'm going to hit modify pose and use current pose. Then hit save. Now, the next thing we're going to do is inside our character here, since our U4 mannequin skeleton has five fingers, and our Cindy characters do not, what I want to do is kind of unify these guys right here. And if you look in our retargeting manager, we're already set to humanoid rig by default. But I'm going to click on show advanced. You'll notice the middle finger and pinky finger for the left and right hands are not assigned. But the ring finger is. So what I want to do if you look, this is finger 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm just going to change these over to the same as that. So finger 1, finger 2, finger 3. Again here, finger 1, 2, three. Then I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and we're going to find the same thing for the right hand and I'm going to do the same thing again. So I want to go to middle. I'm going to change this to finger 01R. So I'll scroll down. Zero finger one. Two. And three. Same thing for the pinky, finger one, finger two, and finger three. We're going to hit save there. Now, we're going to hit save all, make sure we get everything saved. Next thing we want to do is we're going to create our animations. Now that we've got everything set for the way that we need to, we can actually go ahead and I'm going to grab the animations. I'm going to select the third person and MVP. I'm going to hit F2 and Control C to copy the name of third person underscore and MVP. I'm then going to right click, retarget and in blueprints, and retarget. Now, when this comes up, we can click on our SK polygon. You see they're both in a T pose. That's good to go. I'm going to click right here for replace. I'm going to control V to paste in the third person and in BP. And I'm just going to call this my poly ABP animation blueprint. Then I'm going to hit the change. And this is going to let me change the folder where I want it to go to. And I'm going to bring that down here to my animation folder under my character folder. Click OK and retarget. And then I'm going to hit Save All. Now, what you may notice is sometimes it may look like the hand is curved a little bit too much here because of the natural pose of this animation. So what we can do is hit Pause, grab the red bar, scroll all the way back to zero, and just to kind of straighten that out just a little bit, I'm going to select the hand L, and I'm going to bring it out by 20. You can bring it out by 30 if you want. Then I'm going to hit key and apply. Then we hit play on our animation. 
it has changed his hand position permanently within that animation uh, cycle and we can hit save. Now to prepare it to actually work in my character folder I'm going to create another new folder called blueprints. We need a character blueprint so I'm going to go ahead and drop down here and go to the third person and BP and blueprints folder we got a third person character. I'm going to left click, drag this into my blueprints, copy here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to call this my player underscore base. You can call it whatever you want. This is your, your base character you're going to use for your player. I'm not going to worry about changing anything here, but I'm going to go ahead and select my mesh and change it to our soldier and then change the anim class here to our poly ABP hit compile and save we're going to do a couple little things with them real quick now in our game mode for our world here I'm going to go ahead and select game mode override I'm going to change that to third person game mode and our default pawn class I'm going to change over to the player underscore base and now if we hit play we have our character we can walk around the world, we can jump, and everything like normal. But our dude has no hair, mm, this doesn't look as cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my mesh, make sure I hit save all, save selected. You are the master of your own saves. So let's go in here, and I'm going to go to, hmm, what do I want to do here, huh, let's give him a hat. And then let's give him some glasses, and a beard, and a holster. So I'm going to select the head. I'm going to right click and add socket. And then I'm going to select that head socket. Hit F2 to rename it. Call this hat. I'm going to right click on it and add preview mesh. And then just type in hat. And let's give him a cowboy hat. As you can see, don't look right. So let's just rotate it back by 90 degrees. And our hat is done. Select the head again. I'm going to add a socket. Select it. Hit F2. Call this our glasses. Right click on it. Add preview asset. Go to glasses. Let's give them some, some cool glasses and rotate it back by 90 as well. And I'm going to go back to my head one more time, add a socket, select it, hit F2, call this our beard. And again, right click, add a preview asset, beard, and lovely. And then we're just going to rotate that back by 90 as well. Now for our holster, what I actually like to do is go to the um, thigh R. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to put it on the right thigh. And if we scroll down here, I'm going to right-click, add socket, select it, hit F2, call it holster, add preview asset, holster, and delightful. Now, we're going to have to reposition it just a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it out because it's stuck inside his leg a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate 90. And I'm going to invert it to 180. Bring it back over again. And I'm going to move it a little bit farther forward and up just a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got those there, I can hit save. We're good to go. Now to put them on my character, the simplest fashion is, well, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Polygon Military, Meshes, not Materials, Meshes, Characters, Attachments. And I'm going to start with the hat, because that's what we chose first. Here's my cowboy hat. I'm going to go back to my player. With my mesh selected, I'm going to hit Add Component. 
static mesh and the hat's already going to be selected. I'm just going to call this hat. And under parent socket, hat. And there you go. Same thing, I'm going to select my mesh. We come back in here. And that's the beard that I want. Add component. Call this beard. Change the socket to beard. And it's in the right place. Compile and save. Go back to my mesh one more time. Find our glasses. Add a component. And glasses. Change the socket to glasses. And finally, our holster. So we find our holster in the list. With this one, mesh is selected, add component. There's our holster. And I want to go ahead and socket that to holster. Now, all these are quite visible. You can see holster, glasses, beard, hat. With the holster being on the, the, the thigh, it actually moves with the player's leg. Now, you can change that to, say, maybe spine one if you want it to stay in position and not move with the other player's back. But that's just what I like to do with it. Alrighty, and as simple as, uh, what if I want to change the, uh, the hat? I want to go to this hat right here. I select it here. And huh, let's go to the hat, and I can hit this arrow, and there we go. Just that quick, I've changed the hat. You can also, if you so desire, scroll down when, with the hat selected and uncheck visible. And if you want just as an example, you want to have hair there as well. You could add hair as another category here and change your visibility. Whenever the hat's not visible, you can make it to where the hair is entirely up to you. But this will get you started with um, your character walking around, moving around, doing your thing, and have some base level animations. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, Drop me a comment on my Discord channel. Um, I do check the Discord channel quite often. I don't check the comments here as much as I probably should, but hey, this will get you going. And if you um, get enough requests for it, then I'll actually do another video using maybe the animation starter pack and adding in some other animations like waving, saluting, things of that nature. Uh, but let me know. And I want to thank everybody for watching, and I hope this helped, and we'll see you later.